Hi folks, Dave, the Honest Audiophile, and this is the Sennheiser HD 660S2, and these are my Honest Audiophile impressions. So the Sennheiser HD 660S2, this will set you back $600 from your bank account, and it is a open back headphone with a 38 millimeter dynamic driver, 300 ohms of impedance, 104 decibels of sensitivity, and a frequency response range of 8 hertz to 41.5 kilohertz. It weighs 260 grams, and the country of origin is Ireland. So, the Sennheiser HD 660S2. It comes in this pretty standard Sennheiser box. You get a picture of the headphone, a little bit of branding, and, oh, we have a high-res sticker. It's got to sound good. So the 660 S2 is kind of uninspiring when you open it up. On the inside, you get a bed for your headphone to sit in and a little bit of paperwork. You do not get a big hard shell carrying case like you did with the original 660. But you do get a few accessories. Nothing too special here. You're going to get two cables, one that terminates into a quarter inch, and then the other that terminates into a 4.4 balanced. The nice thing is you don't get the three millimeter, or excuse me, three meter cables anymore. You get a 1.8 meter cable. So instead of being 10 foot long, they're more around six foot long. They do still terminate with the standard Sennheiser two pin connector. And then you get the usual Sennheiser adapter for quarter inch to 3.5 they do not include a 4.4 balanced adapter of any kind and then you get this very small sennheiser bag and then you get the headphone so the 660 s2 is going to look very very similar to the original 660 and that's because they're built identical. The only difference is that you get copper lettering and logos instead of the silver. We'll compare it more in a little bit to the original, but they look identical and feel identical. You still get the little bit of wiggle, the big long sliders, a nice cushy headband pad, and then nice cushy velour pads. It still has a little bit of clamp force when you first get them. You're going to have to break them in a little bit. Just kind of pull it out a little bit and uh, kind of loosen it up. And over time it will soften and just feel better. And then the pads do the same. You just kind of play with them a little bit and wear them. And they'll soften up. Over time, you will have to replace the pads, and I recommend using the Sennheiser OEM pad as I find that they sound the best. I've always found on Sennheiser headphones that the alternate pads change the sonics, and so I prefer using the original OEM pads from Sennheiser to maintain the same sound. I'm not trying to enhance or change the sound of the 660S in any way. So I use the stock pads. Comfort wise, the 660S2 is extremely comfortable. I had no issues whatsoever wearing them for five, six hours at a time. They just slip on the head and disappear, being 260 grams. Once that, uh, tight grip is loosened up just a little bit and the pads start breaking in the 660 s2 is extremely comfortable no issues isolation of outside noises really doesn't exist as these are an open back and you can clearly see that 38 millimeter driver the 660 s2 is not the easiest headphone to drive it uh, is not going to sound very good off of a dongle or straight out of a computer. I found that it was adequate, but it was not living up to the potential of the 660 S2. I found that DAPs were able to drive the 660 S2 a little bit better, but again, 
If I wasn't running them off of balanced, they weren't sounding the greatest. They definitely were, were an improvement over dongles and straight out of my computer, but I preferred the 660 S2 on desktop. And so I used them mostly in that way. About 95% of my listening was done straight out of my desktop setups, which were the MyTech Liberty uh, DAC2 and the MyTech Liberty HPA. Also, I have a Headamp GSX Mini, a Tor Audio Roger, and I'll just say Deckard AUN X1S GT, an SMSL DO300, and a Drop THX1 Linear. And also a JDS Labs Atom Plus DAC and Amp. And I found that the 660 S2 sounded the best on desktop, and so I highly recommend getting a desktop setup to use with your Sennheiser HD 660 S2. How do the Sennheiser HD 660 S2 sound? So the Sennheiser HD 660 S2 has a very reference studio sound signature. I found that the base of the 660 S2 has a nice note weight to it, extends nicely into the sub bass and gives you a little bit of rumble and grumble, punch and slam, but just enough to enhance the and bring out some of the characteristics in the bass without being domineering or prominent so the sub bass has a little bit of a rumble and grumble to it just enough to kind of add into the character of the headphone and then the mid bass is a little bit more of the focus and you get some nice punch and slam and you get a little bit of a a, a bit of uh power and authority in the mid bass and it's going to be a more reference type of sound signature with good tonality. You have a nice tone and timbre that sounds very natural and realistic. And then the detail retrieval and resolution is phenomenal. I find that you're not going to miss anything. And also at the same time, it's a very accurate and true um, resolution. And, and you're going to have all the information given with all of the ways that it sounds in a track, if it's badly recorded or badly mixed, if it, it has a, a scratchiness to it or it has a bite to it or an edge to it, you're going to get that in the details. It's going to bring it out and it's going to resolve all that very well. It's a very well controlled, very detailed and very good resolving uh, bass. And then the mids, the mids of the 660 S2 have a nice note weight to them and they have a naturalism about them. You have a nice amount of space and air without being too soft and fluffy. You get some body weight and some note weight to, to the sound and they have a, a naturalism with vocalists and instruments and tone and timbre is very accurate. Everything sounds natural and true. And then just like the bass, the details and resolution are, are fantastic. You're going to hear all the little intricacies of the music without it being force fed to you. It's going to be incorporated in just as the way it should be in a mix and a master. And it's going to reveal the track with its natural uh, representation and it's going to sound reproduced correctly as it should just like you would think that it was done in the studio and if you're using these in the studio you're going to get it the way that it was recorded and you're going to be able to dissect the stage um, and dissect the, the track with its uh, tone and timbre that is just phenomenal and then the treble. The treble is extended very nicely. You get some nice air up top and you also get a very nice sparkle and energy. And there's a nice crispness, a little edginess and a little bite to it. And at times you can get a little bit of zinginess, but it's not overly done. It never goes into fatigue mode. It's not too elevated. It's not force fed in any way. It just has the right amount when it's called upon it's going to show it and it's going to reveal it and it does a really good job with tone and timbre and just like the mids and the bass the detail retrieval and resolution is fantastic you're going to get the right amount without being force fed and without being uh, here's your information but it's going to to present it in a way that is very accurate and true to the recording and if you're using it in the studio, you're going to be able to hear all the information without having something be too much or not a little. And then you're going to be mixing up your, um, your mix. So overall, 
I really like the balance and cohesion of the bass, the mids, and the treble. I find that the 660S is very cohesive and very balanced. And then soundstage. The soundstage of the 660S2 is a wide enough but kind of intimate sound signature. E even though everything sounds a little bit close, it doesn't sound claustrophobic. And then you get the moments of being wide enough to give enough air and space. So it does a good job of portraying the different size of venues, small, large, but it doesn't really go into grand mode. You don't get this wow factor of how huge of a stage it is. It always kind of stays in a little bit more closer uh, sound signature. Somewhat intimate, but not like overly intimate cozy. And it doesn't go into claustrophobic mode. There's really good depth on the 660S. You can really read into a stage and it does a really good job of layering. Everything is just very well separated and placed and it layers it all together. And you can dissect the stage very well. You can see behind and in front and around. Everything is extremely good with its imaging. And you can go, that's that chair right there. That's three from the end. That one is behind that one and over one to the left. Oh, that one is over here. Oh, they swapped. Oh, they moved. And it tracks things extremely well. It's very precise and very accurate. Almost laser point perfect. And you can really hone in on a track and you can really dissect a track. It does it extremely well with its imaging. And then detail retrieval and resolution is phenomenal for its price point. It does a really good job of bringing in all the details of a track. And then it resolves everything that it gives. You're not going to miss anything. And in fact, you may even hear some things that you didn't know existed or you had forgotten had existed in a track. It's going to do a really good job of bringing everything in and portraying that very well without force feeding it to you. And then the tone and timbre is exceptional. This is a very natural sounding headphone and a very accurate and true and it, because it does a good job of extending out into the sub bass and into the treble, you get a very broad range of all of the instruments and it does a good job of staying very balanced. And so you get a, a more accurate representation and reproduction of instruments and vocalists. There's no rolling off uh, on each side or any extended elevated things where it's force feeding it or pushing it or causing it to be too shouty. It does a very good job of portraying tone and timbre and with accuracy. So the Sennheiser HD 660 S2. Yeah, I like this headphone. I like it a lot. How does it compare to the original? So the original 660 S2, I like a lot also, but it does not have the bass extension and it does not have the note weight and the authority throughout the mix. It's not near as full sounding and, and engaging and natural sounding as the 660S2. I find that the 660 is a little bit on the thinner side and also it's not as detailed and not as resolving. The 660S2 does outperform it just a little bit. Soundstage wise, the 660 will sound just a little bit wider, but it doesn't quite have as much depth and it's not as pinpoint in its imaging. Overall though, I like the 660S, but the S2 just outperforms it. And then how does the 660S2 compare to the Sennheiser HD 600? Now the 600 definitely does not have the bass or the treble extension of the, the S2. But it is more forward in the mids. And it is a more mid-focused headphone that is good for vocalists and instruments. And that's about it. It's not near as balanced or as cohesive as the 660S2. It is more elevated in the mids. And they can become a little too much and be a little bit shouty. Soundstage is not as wide and not near as depth or deep as the 660S2. And then the 660S2 is better detailed and resolving. So overall, I find that the 660S2 is a reference headphone that can be used in the studio. 
but also at the same time can be used as a great all-around headphone as most people will be very happy with the sound of the 660 S2 if they're looking for a neutral headphone. I really like the 660 S2 and I highly recommend it. And yeah, this is the most neutral and reference of the 600 line. It's been Dave, the Honest Audio File. Thank you for watching and I'll catch you on the next video. Speaking of next video, somewhere on screen, subscription links and notification bells. If you haven't already, please check those off. Don't forget to give a thumbs up or a thumbs down to the video and check out all the links down below. There's all kinds of information down there regarding how you can contact the channel, follow the channel, support the channel. All that kind of stuff is listed down below along with reference gear and reference tracks and tier lists and all kinds of other things. Also, if you're interested in supporting the channel, please check out those links as you can support them on a monthly or one-time uh, basis. One-time basis, you can give uh, gifts through PayPal or Venmo, and then monthly subscriptions to Patreon and YouTube memberships. With those, you can also have some tiers that will give you access to my private Discord server, or if you really want to talk with me, you can get a uh, one time or not one time, but like one hour, one-on-one um, -on -one conversations and live streams and all that kind of stuff. So check out those links if you're interested in, interested in supporting the channel. And I do want to thank all my current members and patrons very much appreciate all that you give to the channel is much appreciated. So thank you very much for supporting the Honest Audio Fall. And lastly, don't forget to enjoy the music and that honesty is the best policy.